Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're at in the world. Uh, this is Steve Turner. I'm the Business Development Manager at Streakwave for Voice over IP and video conferencing products. And I'm here with Jason New with uh, Yaystar. He's the Senior Technical Trainer for Yaystar. Today, we're going to talk about the uh, PBX solutions, UC solution for um, school projects. And Jason, you want to say hi to everybody? Uh, sure. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for joining our session. And uh, I'm Jason. Glad to be here. Uh, good morning. Okay. Uh, and for today's session, Steve going to work together with me. We're going to talk about our unified communication solutions for uh, school projects. Okay. So previously, you know, as far as we know, what we can do with the telephony system is just for communication only. But for today's session, we're going to talk about something a little bit different. Uh, it's kind of like an integrated solution. We can use our telephony system to work with different different types of terminals for this uh, integrated solution. Uh, all right. Anyway, hope you guys will enjoy today's session. And uh, I will just hand it over to Steve. Thanks, Jason. Um, we also have Angela here. <clears throat> Angela is our marketing director, and she'll be monitoring the question box. So for Anything that comes up as far as questions go, just type that in the question box and she'll either stop us or hold them till the end, depending on the relevancy to the slide that we're on at the time. So we're gonna get started. Um, schools can be challenging, I think, uh, in the overall IT scheme. Uh, they, they have a lot of technology that is being deployed in the schools, especially now with you know, the COVID uh, problem and you know, schools from home, teachers from home, teachers in the building, IT staff, um, you know, this can be a complex thing for them to, to solve with the other problem that they typically have, which is technology costs a lot of money and where you spend your money makes a very large difference in your overall IT budget to what you can afford to do holistically. So if we can make the telephony portion of their IT budget smaller or more, effect, or more efficient or uh, affordable, then we're doing them a great service. So, I mean, when you think about, you know, bad words like Cisco call manager and, and big short tail systems and things like that, they're, they're, they can be for this large deployment, you know, even a couple hundred thousand dollars, depending on what terminals and, and solution you're getting. So um, this is a great way to take uh, a, an affordable product to, your school districts and schools in the area that you're at and and offer them a bit the ability to you know recarve their IT budget you know into a smaller piece of pie that would cover telecom while still delivering even a more expanded solution set potentially than they have the ability to do now so let's take a look at what that might look like so here is a sort of a holistic view of what Jason mentioned before in terms of IP terminals and and integrated solutions that solve you know, issues that schools see and need to integrate, but you know, potentially could have problems with proprietary systems and things like that. So um, we'll start on the top left with, hey, how are we gonna secure the facility with you know, outdoor intercoms and, and, and keeping students safe and, and, and visitors from the outside at least being pre-vetted before they're allowed to enter the building. Um, we've had some, things in, in US history that everybody's pretty aware of in terms of safety concerns. Um, we don't need to dredge all that up, but you know that's a fact of life and we're seeing that over and over. And I think you know, COVID-19 has made some people even crazier. So um, door access integration is a helpful tool to be able to then in a security center, see that person at the intercom, speak to them, evaluate them. Um, you have of course the core network server, uh, PBX system, and then um, even keeping people in a secure parking area or, um, you know, anything like that is available to integrate as well. Not to mention the typical, um, you know, office environment with the phones. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about Linkus later in the presentation when Jason takes over. But this is a way to mobily, mobily enable um, teachers, faculty, uh, maintenance, um, you know, administration and IT people to then not need to find a phone on campus. They can essentially carry their extension with them in their pocket, on their tablet, on their laptop, or even their desktop. So 
It's a end-to-end -end view, a very similar experience, if not exactly the same, from phone to PC to laptop to tablet to, to you know, user device in your pocket. So, and then schools tend to have a lot of broadcast, uh, both indoor and outdoor. Um, this can be weather related, it can be security related, it can be just as simple as a bell change for class changes. Um, and then not to mention calling into individual rooms for hey, send little Johnny to the principal's office, his mom's here, or um, you know, what, what, whatever happens in terms of you know adapting the overhead sound and paging to what the customer or the uh, you know school district might need in terms of functionality. And that can be done in IP or in an analog conversion. So it does, does not need to be a rip and replace situation for um, analog devices that are in this space already. We can, through a handful of uh, you know, uh, devices, endpoints, if you will, that would attach to the PBX, make those conversions um, and, and satisfy you know, utilizing those, those devices that are maybe already there. So this is sort of what we're meaning in terms of an integrated holistic solution that can handle the school's general um, availability for endpoint devices. So how does that work? Well, you get a feature-rich PBX that has these system components built in and um, you know, integrated systems like CRMs, if that's something that's being used to, you know, for a database for children, or things like Teams or uh, other things like that. Um, you see clients, we talked about the Linkus client and the, and the ability to use multiple devices. And by the way, those devices can be simultaneously registered. So you don't have to pick one that you're using. They can all be registered all the time uh, as needed. Um, you have a you have an integrated contact, so the entire district contact list can be uh, available to all users on the system, or a portion of the users, or however you want to uh, delegate that. Remote working, we don't we can eliminate the need to actually have an endpoint sent to the teacher's home if they're still teaching from teaching from home and using you know big, big video platforms. Um, you know, a lot of schools in my area have adopted Zoom or Teams or other platforms like that for large scale, you know, one to many type uh, instructional uh, things. And so um, the phone doesn't have to be a traditional desk set. It can, again, like we said, be something that is a, integrated in their laptop or their tablet or the, even their cell phone. And that's the same extension that they would have in their room at school. So uh, this is very flexible, very um, feature rich and has all these components built in that you can then enable and utilize as you need. Um, so we'll move on to the next slide. So here's what the P-Series PBXs look like. There's three of them. Uh, the P-50 probably is not gonna be one that you choose for a school project. It's on the smaller side. We'll see that here in a minute. But um, this, this, these suffice uh, probably 95% of small to medium-sized enterprises in the marketplace. Um, they all have very powerful chipsets, very, um, you know, powerful RAM setups and things like that to handle all of these integrations. They're also very flexible in terms of their design. It is modularly designed, which is a great help to you as the reseller and or uh, integrator that the system's not cookie cutter. You don't, you don't buy model A, B, or C. You can buy the chassis and then you can custom configure, hey, what ports out of these eight that are in this slot need to be uh, FXS ports for say fax machines or whatever. Maybe you need a GSM connection for failover. Maybe the other two are gonna be hard, you know, analog line connections, CO line connections so that you have a traditional PSTN connection that's as a fail safe. And then, you know, any other model uh, on these eight that you, you know, the, the configuration is customizable. We'll show you that in a, just a second. Also, there's a feature inside uh, the system to make it the deployment um, easier. Behind this YayStar tag, there's an NFC reader, and you can, you know, touch that with your um, cell phone and assign it its IP address right from the get-go. As soon as you plug it in and hit the network, so you don't have to go then scan for it and then and then apply the new settings and all that. So there's some interesting uh, deployment uh, features that are going to be shown here as well. So. As I said, most of your schools are gonna probably start in the P560 or 570 range. These are 
um, have a baseline and then they can grow so they can be when they come out of the box their user there's 100 extensions you can grow that to 200 there's 30 uh, call paths concurrent call paths that can grow to 60 with some modular uh, integration uh, 16 gigs of ram obviously um, you can have you know eight fxs fxo type ports uh, anyhow they're, they're this is a well-appointed machine they're also ultimately, if you need something bigger than 500 users, if you're doing a larger district, these are stackable as well. So you can get two and then stack them together, and then you know interop as as pretty much one system. So if you need to grow beyond 500 users and 120 calls, that's also doable with the stackable feature. So no worries in terms of capacity. Here's your flexibility modules. These these would uh, I'll show you in a second where they go inside the unit but um, there's you can buy them in the two port uh, configurations and stack them on the card inside the unit to build whatever configuration you need um, we're seeing a lot of adoption on the gsm occasionally here for you know like an ultimate failover for complete power loss or um, you know anything like that where there might be a um, uh, 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 power, you know, power redundancy or power supply available for you know an hour or two hours, and maybe the GSM in a total blackout situation would be the only thing that might run that day. So, um, a lot of flexibility here to grow the system or outfit the system the way you need it initially, and if you need to go back and make changes, you can do that. So, very flexible in terms of the way that the system is built and configured to your custom configuration needs. So here's a picture inside. You'll take the top cover off. You see the cards in here laid in these colors. Um, and here as well, these allow for you to take this EXO board, that, that's the eight port FX uh, RJ11 connectors, uh, the front plate, and simply mount these cards on these slots to the configuration that you need for the particular box you're building for that particular client. And again, go back and change that if necessary later on. Um, the 560 will hold one of these cards. The 570 would be uh, pictured here, which uh, would have two card slots and, and they would be able to handle up to 16 uh, RJ11 or a combination of uh, PRI or other availability. So it's really a flexible system and, and really well designed and suited for um, the flexibility of moving, you know, initial configuration and moving forward. Obviously, these all handle SIP as well, so that's not the, uh, these are not, you know, analog systems. These are IP, but it gives you that hybrid environment in whatever configuration you might need. So these are, again, we talked about this previously, so we'll get moving on, but um, these are the limitation or uh, capacities of the systems that, that are available. We talked about feature rich. Um, this is a fairly comprehensive list of features. Um, the business features here, telephony features that you would see in traditional systems, um, all the way to you know how to administer, maintain IT and, and secure the systems, and then your unified communications. Again, Linkus Mobile Client provides a lot of flexibility, not just the mobile client, but the desk client, the web client. These are three different things because they appear on three different device types. Um, there's also click to call features, which is I think Today, uh, Jason has been enhanced to, to uh, link us with Google. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the new firmware is released on uh, today. Yeah, May 13. So uh, that's a benefit. So it's a Google uh, extension now that uh, used to be called uh, Click to Call. Yay, start Click to Calls now. Um, yeah, I, now we changed the name. It's like the updated version we call it yaystar link is for google uh, you can use that extension for a better user experience uh, especially on your web client so if you turn it off uh, when you receive an incoming call uh, it doesn't matter you just turn off your web browser you know like i mentioned so you so you will still get the new incoming call notification uh, really user friendly awesome uh, there's also an operator console so a main district operator and things doesn't have to have a gigantic desk set with 15 sidecars she can choose or you can choose to enable the operator panel for them and they'll be, you know the the cti integration between the desk set and call handling they can drag and drop transfer they can you know see calls on hold they can see calls in queue 
um, they have a very large picture of being able to help, uh, you know, facilitate call transfers and things like that. Back over here, I wanted to mention, this is pretty big in the K-12 market with Teams integration. Microsoft does a really great job of um, offering Teams and other Microsoft products to the, to the schools um, at, at a very good price and it's very widely adopted. So Jason will tell you a little more about this later, but there's an excellent integration to the Teams environment um, that you'll, I think, appreciate with this with this um, solution. So we'll move on here. Um, the GUI interface on this is really, really good. It's very intuitive. It's very sort of everything is sort of stated uh, or named or uh, titled what it what it really is in the system. Uh, things are arranged logically in you know extensions uh, functionalities in in that that area. Trunk functionality has its area, um, call rules and things like that. So I think you'll appreciate the way the GUI's laid out on this quite a lot. Again, we talked about the NFC read write for the IP address configuration earlier. There's a large, um, very granular based permission set in this uh, solution that you can um, extend to users and, and, um, and have them sort of self-manage a few parts of their experience. Um, there's also grouping of extensions and things like that to allow flexibility for the way the calls are handled versus, and also way the way the phones are deployed in terms of groups or user types and things like that. Um, excellent voicemail integration with uh, custom or smart intuitive uh, prompts already, or not prompts, but messages. And then in the Linkus client itself, um, on any of the platforms, the desktop, the mobile client, or the um, the web client, there is a very uh, large presence and chat feature here that allows for some collaboration as well. So I think you'll appreciate that when you see those things in the solution. This uh, this is also easy to deploy. So once you take it out of the box and you're deploying it, um, there's a lot of plug and play functionality, specifically right now in the P-Series with very tightly integrated um, plug and play solutions for um, Yaystar and um, Fanville, but other phone types like Grandstream and other models are coming very soon in a, in a future firmware release. Um, this saves you a ton of time with configuring the phones. Um, the MAC addresses will be sort of self-detected by the PBX, and then you can uh, do some bulk configuring phones with uh, templates specifically by model of, of the same manufacturer and things like that. Also, um, as I said, Yealink and Fanville um, are the current supported plug and play phones. And I'll just mention that both of those manufacturers also have very nicely laid out, and very well appointed um, endpoint device management systems of their own that would probably pair quite well here in terms of provisioning and or um, you know, future troubleshooting. So you have a very nicely appointed deployment and troubleshooting and ongoing maintenance solution when you combine the two together. So it's a really great, uh, really great pair. So there's a built-in firewall. Um, it's got uh, obviously a, a fairly substantial auto defense system for, you know, think about IP addresses that are continuing to ping and try to register. Most of the time, you know, that that would be somebody trying to hack in and then those, those systems could be automatically blocked and, and blacklisted and ignored going forward. Um, there's also a v VPN server on board that allows for remote phone connections to be stable and secure and encrypted so that there's not much uh, in the way of um, exposure to the uh, you know hack world or anything like that as well. So those are all built-in features in the system as well. Then some other safety concerns. This does support fully carries law for E911 service. Um, you can make uh, emergency calls directly. Um, you can do all the uh, E911 assignments inside the uh, the uh, extension table. Um, this, if you're not familiar with this, this would be sort of like uh, the ability to say extension 402 is in wing A on the north end of the building. You know, they, things like that. They give first responders more of an exact location than, hey, it's on the Campus ABC, right? Which is, um, you know, difficult. Think about, you know, 
10 story, 15 story office buildings having a similar issue, right? They can say, hey, this is office 206, floor two, west corner of the building. You can do a similar type um, adaptation for uh, giving you know, uh, responders or E911 responders the you know, basic physical location. And all of that relates to making the campus safer and getting responders to the exact area that the 911 call was made in quicker, faster, and um, potentially saving a lot of time and effort and lives. So that's the extent of what I was going to talk about today. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Jason. He's going to cover some more specific uh, details of things that we covered uh, in my presentation there, and he'll show you some of the solution sets in a little closer detail. Okay, sure. Thank you, Steve. Now I'm gonna start talking about the uh, you know solutions based on our P service system, uh, which Steve mentioned before. Now let's just jump in and take a look. Okay, so Steve he actually gave us the general idea, you know, kind of like a product overview of our P service system. Now exactly how do we use the P service system for the solution for the you know school project? Now let's have a check. Uh, I would like to talk about our solutions based on four different aspects. Number one, I'm going to talk about the access control solution if we try to use P-Service system with some terminal devices uh, like access control, like door phone, like intercom. And number two is going to be a broadcast solution, especially I guess this is quite popular for campus, you know, especially like for elementary school, for high school, anyway. Uh, pretty sure we're going to use the broadcast system, you know, like uh, automatic, I'm sorry, automatic broadcast, uh, scheduled broadcast. Anyway, uh, I will talk about more details later. And number three, I will just talk about some uh, unified communication solution for faculties. Okay, so the last one is kind of like a summary. I will just make a summary about our solutions in today's session. So let's jump in with the first one, access control solution. Uh, so you guys can see my screenshot. Can you see it? Yep, we're good. Okay, uh, okay. So let's take a look. Now for access control solution, you can see uh, we can simply deploy our P service PBX in the local area network, of course. Now as for the solution, just like it called, it's called the access control. So how do we make it work? You know, there are many types. There are so many options in the market uh, for different types of intercoms. Now you can use something like, uh, I guess you can use something from Fanville, something from Hike Vision, just an example, right? Because they provide us some SIP terminals for door phone, for access control. So the good thing is those devices, they can totally support SIP. Now, you know, uh, the reason why I call this is like a good thing because our PBX supports standard SIP. So if your terminal can support SIP, there's no problem for you to register that particular device on our PBX as an example, uh, I'm sorry, as an extension, <laughs> I'm sorry. So when we try to deploy the whole solution here, it's pretty simple. We can just create a bunch of extension user accounts. Then we're going to register those terminal devices on our PBX to work as an ex uh, extension. So for example, uh, if this is going to be the gate, you know, the public access, I will simply just fix the outdoor intercom. Uh, with the camera or without camera depends on us right so i can fix that device out of the you know the gate over there and on the hey, other side we yep sorry to interrupt but uh i think we're only seeing solution and value still oh uh, i'm sorry i guess that go. might be okay now we can understand more what you're talking about thanks okay sure okay so let's take so on the other side, on the other side is going to be the security center, you know, um, you know, in your office, in the school, in the campus. So in the security center, we can do something, you know, very normal, you know, like uh, just like the normal way how we system. So we can use a video console phone or or maybe just a normal IP phone. Doesn't matter. And the point is, if you prefer to use the IP phone to connect with the outdoor access control, you can definitely do it because both of them are registered on our PBA as the regular extension. So if someone's out of the office, I'm sorry, out of the school, out of the campus, they just press the button on the outdoor intercom. So we will get a phone ring on the security center. That's it. So you can simply just grab your phone, pick it up, and you can check on the monitor. You can just answer, answer that call to identify uh, you know, the visitor's identity. That's it. 
Or maybe if we prefer, we can also use another device, which is indoor intercom. This is going to be another solution for you. Like, uh, uh, for example, I mentioned Hike Vision. I guess they provide us something called outdoor intercom and indoor intercom. So if you prefer to have two intercoms for outdoor and indoor, uh, you can definitely do it. Uh, so that's going to be the solution. All right. And on the other side, for another kind of solution we can do it here is going to be the uh, public area, like a parking lot. I guess for school, for us, pretty sure we will have parking lot, we will have playground, something like that. So maybe this is going to be a public area. Uh, sometimes maybe something bad happened there, maybe some emergency situation happened there. We can absolutely fix the intercom on the like a ticket vending machine or like a emergency column, you know, something like that. We can just fix the intercom on it. Then if there's something wrong happen in the uh, public area, so we can simply just press the button uh, on this ticket vending machine because we got a built-in intercom, you know, just one single button. If I press it, that's kind of like I just sent a call from this intercom uh, through my PBX to another terminal device, which is going to be the security center. Now, in this example, you guys can see everything's are connected and every single call, they just go through our PBX to the security center. So people who's in charge in the security center can just figure out what was going on on the, you know, in the public area, in the parking lot. Anyway, so we can take action. So this is going to be a very comprehensive solution for the campus. Uh, besides that, another solution we can have here is, uh, I guess this is not that popular, but it could be one of our options. It's called remote office. It's called like a, like a remote access control. Uh, what is the remote access control? You know, if you're in the office, like uh, I'm working in the security center, I'm just the person who's in charge. So currently I'm in the office. I can definitely use my IP phone or the intercom to control the access, to control the door, the gate. But what if I'm not in the office? Like I'm, I'm out of the office, I'm in my remote office, I'm in my house anyway, uh, especially under the current situation. So if, if we got a visitor there, but I'm not in, in the office. So if I wanna figure out who was there. So don't forget Lancus, guys. You know, we have Lancus mobile application, PC application, and web client. So now, for example, I can simply just grab my mobile there. I can take my cell phone. I got this application. So if, if someone's out of the office, out of the gate, uh, out of the campus, and he's ringing the bell, now I will be able to get this incoming call on my mobile as well. So I can just grab my mobile. I can take a look. And I can, you know, talk to the guy, talk to the visitor. So this is going to be another option, another solution. Uh, well, I guess this is not that popular, but this is just another option. Uh, so just in case, if you're not in the office, you want to have the remote access control, there you go. So generally speaking, I guess for this access control solution, we got some advantages. You guys can see rain simultaneously. This is the first point. So if you deploy multiple terminals for, for people who's in charge, uh, definitely we can make it doesn't matter you're in the office or out of the office you're going to get a ring simultaneously and secondly as like i mentioned we can have this remote access control solution it's a pretty good choice if you need it that's just the you know the other option uh, and also we got a call for wording this feature it's based so don't forget it if this is going to be an access control solution based on telephony system uh, if you want to have the call for wording, definitely you can do it. Uh, besides, visual intercom, like I said. So if your intercom supports uh, this sort of solution, like you got a camera out of the gate, so you can definitely use this video IP phone, the video console IP phone in the security center. So when you grab your phone, you will be able to identify that person's face. You know, that's it. It's a visual intercom solution totally. And uh, just like you mentioned, the last one, this is so flexible for you to have multiple terminals. Could be your mobile, could be your computer, could be the indoor intercom or IP file. So flexible. And as for the way how we configure it, it's pretty simple. Based on our P-Service PBX, we got a, something called paging and intercom. Uh, honestly, this is not a big deal. This is one of our basic key telephony features. So what we're supposed to do now is just jump into the PBX. All right, jumping to the PBX, create one paging and intercom group. So the type here, you guys can see, I got a two-way intercom, that's it. 
So all of your, you know, terminals, those involved to terminals, we can just select them in the in my right hand. On my right hand, you guys can see this selected list. So those extensions, we can just select them in the list. And after that, there you go. The solution is gonna work. That's just the way we configure it. So generally speaking, because everything's based on a system, based on our P service PBX. It's a user system, uh, it's a user friendly system, really handy for you to configure it. All right, so that was the first solution. Now let's talk about another one, the second one, the broadcast solution for school. Um, the whole solution can be simplified by this topology on my left hand, take a look. So once again, uh, if we wanna have the broadcast solution, of course, people who's in charge, he's gonna work in the broadcast room. Let's see broadcast room, or maybe we call it something else, some other things like a broadcast office. Anyway, it's the same thing. And we're going to deploy an RP source PBX in the server room. Uh, this, is, uh, this is like a common sense, right? So basically everything's gonna be deployed in the same local area network. So for the office area, you know, indoor area for office for all of our faculties, they're gonna work in their office, same as your role, by using their desktop IP phones, or perhaps they can use Lancus uh, on their mobile, on their computer, whatever. Okay. And as for the broadcast solution, let's take a look. You know, in the market, you have so many options uh, for speaker. You know, some speakers they can support SIP, right? IP based speaker. So same like what I mentioned before, just make sure this speaker can support SIP. Then there's no problem. We can definitely register the SIP speaker on our PBX to work as a regular extension. Uh, same like what I was talking about in the previous solution. You know, all kinds of terminals on the PBX. If you register them on the PBX, it doesn't matter what kind of terminals we're using now. Uh, eventually, we're just gonna turn them to work as a regular extension. That's it. So if I wanna start now, I'm gonna use the paging feature. That's the built-in feature, guys. You don't need to spend any additional you know, time or, or spend extra money for figuring out this. It's a built-in feature. So you deploy the PBX in, the in your local area network. Uh, that's just a ready-to-go solution. All right, and this is very flexible. So for example, if you wanna start a broadcast, uh, like I want to play the announcement to to all of my you know you know kids for all, all the kids or faculties anyway, so I can just grab my phone. I can grab my IP phone. This is one option, or I can use analog phone. Or maybe if I prefer, I can play the announcement remotely. Like I I can just grab my mobile. I got Linkus on my cell phone, so I can also play the announcement through my mobile through my cell phone. That's just another option. So the broadcast on multiple terminals, this is so flexible. This is so flexible, guys. I mean, you know, you have many choices, IP phone, analog phone, your Linkus mobile client, PC client, or web client, whatever you prefer. All right. Uh, and also we do support advanced solution. Another advanced solution here is called scheduled paging. Because when you jump into our P service PBX, when you take a look on the paging feature, there's one more option, it's called scheduled paging. Because we're talking about the solution for school, you know, for campus, uh, definitely we will we will like to have an automatic broadcast. Uh, for example, like every single day, uh, four o'clock p.m. That's just the uh, you know school's times out. So we will like to play the music automatically. That's definitely automatic broadcast. I'm not gonna play the announcement every single day manually. So we can just set a schedule there. Tell the system that hey, this is the rule every single day, four o'clock p.m and I'm gonna upload a prompt there, which is gonna be a music. So this, the system is gonna play the music automatically according to our configuration. That's really functional. And also we can, <clears throat> uh, you know, it, you send, use this solution for something else like efficient Zoom announcement and emergency alert uh, with SIP speaker. Now in this example, you guys can see, I'm just putting this SIP speaker, that's, that's from Hike Vision actually. But you have so many options. Could be Hike Vision SIP speaker, could be Fanville SIP speaker, uh, or maybe other brands. So this is going to be a pretty, you know, flexible solution for you guys if you if you're trying to handle the project. Uh, besides, sometimes you know, for some schools, probably they're like uh, old school style. They're not using SIP speaker in the campus. Uh, they were using analog speakers, uh, the amplifier for many years. So probably they don't want to change the speaker to SIP. 
it's okay. You can definitely choose something called adapter. That's a that's an analog speaker uh, adapter. We can just configure this adapter, register this adapter on our PBX because that kind of solution. I mean that that product, that adapter can also support SIP. We can just register the adapter on our PBX as an extension. And on the other side, we can just use the cable. You know, connect the adapter with the amplifier. So this is going to be a completely a hybrid solution for broadcast as well. So even this is going to be an alt speaker, don't worry about it. We can still make it work, uh, you know, very flexible. And this is the way how we configure it. It's called paging feature. So you jump into your PBX, uh, the type here, we were, we're going to select something different. We call it one-way paging. And uh, simultaneously, just select all of your, you know, involved extensions in the list. So mostly those extensions are going to be registered by, you know, SIP speakers or maybe adapter if you try to use the analog speaker on the P-Series PBX. That's it. So next time, if you want to play the announcement uh, to the public area anyway, you simply just grab your phone, make a call to this paging group, uh, which is the number. You guys can see the number, 6600. Uh, 66 that will be the number. So you can simply drop a call to this number and you can play your announcement there okay and uh <clears throat> by the way another solution another solution we can support here is called uh one-way multicast paging so sometimes maybe for factors you know for those school factors they probably want to like if i'm the supervisor or i'm the administrator anyway so i pro probably i don't want to play the announcement uh publicly uh to to the public now, probably I just want to drop drop an audio message to all of from all of our you know faculties, so I can make my system working under this mode, which is one way multicast paging. Now, if there, I mean, I mean, just make sure all of our faculties IP files, you know, those IP terminals can support this multicast paging feature. That's it. So I can simply drop a call to this multicast channel. I can just live an audio message in this multicast channel. And, and as for other users, they can't get this new message notification uh, based on their IP phone. You know, there's a BLF key uh, uh, feature. So they can simply just configure the BLF key for the multicast paging feature. Then they will be able to get this, you know, new message notification. So they can just press the BLF key, go access the multicast channel uh, to get the audio message. So this is just another option. If you want to play the internal announcement, to you know your factors you can do something like this and next one schedule of paging all right this is something more advanced so just like i mentioned for school uh for campus sometimes we just want to play the music or some some you know mostly or mostly it's going to be music automatically right so we can simply just set a schedule then our system will just start the automatic broadcast that's it according to your configuration. Now, for example, I said the start date, uh, March 20, 23rd, 2021, and time will be 4 p.m., that's it. Days of week is gonna be Monday to Friday, that's it. So our system will just follow my configuration to start the automatic broadcast every single day, according to my configuration. Uh, that's a more advanced solution, and I guess this is really functional for campus. Hey, Jason, yeah. I mean, this can handle multiple schedules, right? I mean, uh, I can do this for bell change for classes, right? So every hour and a half throughout the day, every day. And exactly. Monday's schedule, Monday schedule can be slightly different from Tuesday if the class schedule's altered. Um, I mean, sure. what we're getting at here, folks, is that is to build a bell scheduler for for a yeah. school system. And Jason keeps saying music, but maybe it's just a, a bell tone or whatever the class change, you know, uh, wave file uh, would sound like, right, for whatever they were using. So this yeah, is a right. way to create the entire bell schedule to be automated. And um, there are outside uh, third party stuff like I, I remember selling bell schedule and stuff like that from other companies. But this is sort of built into the PBX the ability to do this, um, uh, you know, an initial setup and and create all that, you know, in house um, is really really a nice feature built into the PBX. So that's all I had to say, Jason. Yeah, sure thing. Yeah, I was thinking about bell schedule, but I just you know forget the bell schedule. I was keeping talking <laughs> about the the you know music. 
uh, sorry guys. But anyway, Steve, he just mentioned it's a bell schedule. That's right. Yeah, it's really functional, especially for this K-12, you know, school projects. Yeah. Um, next one, I would like to talk about something else. You know, schedule paging, it's a cool feature. I mean, we can use it for campus, of course, but if you prefer to use it for something else, you can definitely do it. The application scenarios could be, you know, so flexible. I just remember we got a real case in China. It's not for, uh, in our domestic market, it's not for school. Something is kind of like uh, people, they are using this feature for an uh, airport. Um, you know, there's a tourism city in China. It's called Qingdao. It's a really beautiful city. If you guys have a chance to visit Qingdao, well, please just go visit that city. It's really beautiful. And, uh, you know, Qingdao International Airport is currently using our telephony system with this paging feature for broadcast in the airport. So that's what I want to talk about. Mace, this is so flexible. You can use it for campus, of course, but if you prefer to use it for something else like a train station, airport, uh, shopping more. Anyway, the public area, you want to play the announcement, the bell, the bell, uh, the music, whatever you want. You can definitely use this feature. It's so functional. Yeah. And next one, let's talk about the unified communication solution for factors. Okay. So the unified communication, basically, this is something based on our telephony system. Now, okay. So let's just focus on the telephony system itself. Okay. Take a look. So I guess for factors, mostly Traditionally, if we're talking about the you know telephony system for them, it's nothing special. They're just gonna use their IP phones or maybe analog terminals for making calls only. Well, this time we can give them a better solution. I mean, because everything's IP based, so it gives us more possibilities to make our solution be more dynamic. So why not? Have a look. Uh, first of all, P service system. This is a pure IP solution. Uh, if you want to make it be a hybrid system, you can do it. So it means if you have some analog channels, digital channels left in your office, you can connect them on the system by plug and play. And if you prefer to have a pure IP solution, just go ahead. You know, all of your IP phones can be registered on our system by auto provisioning if your IP phone can be supported. Uh, for example, like Airlink, Fanvo, Grandstream, you can register them on our system by auto provisioning. And on the other side, uh, we can also use our Lancus UC client. Uh, this is very important. And uh, talking about the unified communication, definitely we're going to talk about some solutions based on our smart devices, uh, which is called Lancus. So the good thing here is we're talking about the P-Service system, means we have an enhanced unified communication solution. So you can have this free application available on your mobile and your computer. Uh, it's called Lancus. Uh, you can search it on Google Play, App Store, free application. Uh, besides that, you can also have it on your web. Uh, means you can use your browser. If you prefer, forget about the application. Uh, jump into your web browser, use the web client directly with a better user experience. So let's talk about more details. We're going to talk about Lancus. Here we go. Now, Lancus. A uh, free application available on your mobile and your computer, and you will have another option, which is the web client. Now, you guys can see I got this photo here. I got this picture here. So you can see something different. If you're using the web client, you can have more functionalities. For example, you can have video call feature. You can have video conference feature. I do believe this is the perfect solution, especially for the current situation. You know, we're still under the pandemic issue. Uh, it's nothing good, but it just totally changes the way how we communicate. So sometimes we really hope we can have a face-to-face -face communication solution. Now, now we get a web client. That's just a pretty smart idea. So if you try to use the web client, you can do whatever you want. All right, not just for making calls, you can use it for a video conference totally uh, like this. And uh, <clears throat> by the way, if we're using the application, all right, the mobile app or PC application, uh, all the key telephony features are totally supported. So this is completely a very convenient solution for helping us to stay connected, right? So if you wanna you know, make a call, you wanna have some call management, you wanna have instant message feature, uh, these are all supported with no doubt. And another thing, guys, uh, especially for Lincoln's mobile, I guess this is another point. Another point is mobility sometimes can uh, can be a pretty good solution for safety guarantee. You know, uh, especially for school project, I guess, you know, 
for for all of our factors, they can choose to use Link as mobile application because it's so convenient, it's so flexible for every single one of them. Uh, they can use this solution to be connected, you know, with each other. And I guess this can also be a pretty good solution for our for kids, you know, uh, especially for safety issue, you know. So I guess for kids, I'm pretty sure they get a smartphone, right? So we can we can also tell them that. Hey, please get the link Linkus application on your mobile. All right, uh, and we can register their mobile. I mean, their extension on our PBX. So if there's something bad happen or some situation happen in the school in the campus, uh, we can use Linkus as the communication solution. Uh, just in case. I mean, of course we don't want anything happen there, but just in case, if there's something wrong happen. Uh, then we can, you know, just keep connected with kids. This is very important for safety. Yeah, and for web client, this is completely an enhanced link, uh, enhanced solution for unified communication because, like I mentioned, you can use web client not just for making calls. You can even have a video call. You can use web client for video conference feature, uh, and also our. Uh, Linkus solution, by the way, for remote working, like I mentioned, for remote working now on the PC system, we got an enhanced solution for remote working as well. It's called Remote Access Service. Uh, so let's take a look. Okay, uh, before we start talking about that, I just want to tell you guys something else. Like uh, we also got a built-in context management. Uh, I guess this is not that important, but anyway, I guess sometimes probably we wanna we, we probably we can use the context management for something like uh, parents. You know, probably we need parents contacts. I guess we can use this built-in context management. It's easier, it's simpler, save your time, save your money. You know, you don't have to figure out the third-party integration to manage your I mean, you know, those kids, parents, contact number. We can just use this built-in feature. To simplify our job. Okay, <clears throat> and also the video conference feature, like I mentioned. So for video conference feature on the P service system, so far we can support four concurrent meetings uh, per PBX, and uh, for each one of the uh, conference, for each one of those meetings, it can support maximum five per parties uh, in the session in the meeting. Uh, so that's what we can do with this conference feature. So. I guess it's still gonna be a pretty good solution for, you know, faculties because they don't need a big conference. Sometimes they just want to have a quick discussion with each other so they can use this conference feature. And by the way, if you're using video conference feature based on PC or system, you can, uh, you can have another feature which is uh, screen share. Like I want to share my presentation to my colleagues, I can definitely do it there. Uh, this is based on web clients, so it's based on WebRTC. So for anyone else, like I want to invite other participants, probably parents, probably another kid anyway, they can jump into the video conference uh, simply by the invitation link. It's just based on web, so you don't need to get another user account or something. I would just simply share with you the, the link of the video conference. You click on the link, you're going to jump into the session directly. Uh, very easy to use. And this is going to be the remote uh, access service, an enhanced solution for remote working, like I mentioned. Now, because we have this, uh, since I mentioned, we have this flexible solution on um, mobile, on computer, it's pretty good for faculty. So if, they, if they're out of school, if they're going to work remotely, uh, on a traditional IP-based system, you know, we got a problem there if we want to figure out the remote working. The problem is, how do we figure out the remote access? You know, honestly, guys, the, normally the way how we figure out remote access is going to be a little bit complex. But besides, it's not good for security because you're supposed to get a very particular public IP address deployed on your router. And simultaneously, you're supposed to figure out port forwarding. I mean, a bunch of ports, you're supposed to map them on the router. So you will be able to figure out this remote registration, uh, remote connection, uh, even the communication. So it's complex, it's not good for security. Uh, that was what we had before. So this time on the PCR system, we get a better solution. It's called Remote Access Service. Now this solution is like, uh, we just provide our customers something called Yaystar FQDN, a fully qualified domain name provided by Yaystar. 
So it means for customers, for the you know, for the school, they don't have to configure anything about their network settings. Not necessary. You don't need to get a public IP address. You don't need to make portfolio wording. Once you enable the remote access service on your P-Service PBX, there will be an encrypted private tunnel between your terminals, which is your Linkus mobile client, PC client, web client, uh, with your PBX directly. So it's good for your security, and this is simplified for your configuration. I mean, in other words, there's nothing you need to do for configuration. You can just use it directly, like a ready-to-go solution. Okay. Uh, and of course, we do support Microsoft Teams, like Steve mentioned at the very beginning. I guess this is also going to be a pretty good solution because, as as we know, uh, Microsoft they get lots of supports on school projects, right? So, pretty sure Teams is going to be a popular solution for uh, campus, for high school, especially for I guess for university because they have uh, they provide lots of discounts, I guess. So, this is a really popular solution for school users. Uh, you know, fact is they can use Teams for team collaboration and uh, kids, they can also use Teams for the, you know, internal communication with, uh, you know, school factors. Anyway, it's a perfect solution. So good thing here is we do support the integration with Microsoft Teams and uh, it's really easy to realize it. Uh, there's a third party provider. It's called Qunify. So Qunify is like the Microsoft authorized party, uh, I'm sorry, authorized uh, partner. So they provide this solution, it's called Yaystar for Microsoft Teams. Now for our solution here is, uh, we can simply get this application from uh, AppSource, all right? Uh, it's not expensive, I guess they charge you annually, but not that expensive. You can simply get this application there and then just try to register this application on our PBX directly uh, to make it work as an extension. That's the way how we make it work. And then, uh, because this application is kind of like bound with your Microsoft Teams uh, user account. So once you figure out the registration between this app uh, application and our P service PBX, <coughs> it's kind of like we just register our Microsoft Teams user account on our PBX directly. So the whole solution is gonna work like this. We can simply turn our Microsoft Teams to work as an extension, register on our PBX. So this is like upgraded Teams. So if you wanna make a call through your Teams, go ahead, because behind your Teams, you got a very uh, you know, powerful system, powerful telephony system. So all the key telephony features are gonna be synchron synchronized on your Teams with no doubt. So your company phone lines, I mean, your school phone lines are gonna be available for your teams totally. And uh, you can have this internal communication seamlessly, totally. I mean, it doesn't matter which kind of terminal are you gonna use there. You can use your mobile, your computer, your IP phone or teams. Anyway, they're all connected with each other. Okay. And uh, generally speaking, we got a bunch of advantages for, for different users. Let's take a look. So for Factus, you know, we have this complete unified communication solution. All right, you can uh, use our P-Service PBX to work with Teams integration. Uh, we also support Outlook based on PC client. And all the key telephony features are gonna be supported. You can also have a video call feature, video conference feature, these are all the pretty good solution for helping you to simplify your daily work. And for ad administration, it's gonna be the same thing. You know, everything's based on this powerful system. So like if you're providing some consulting services to parents, you can create a call queue there, right? And talking about call queue, guys, uh, PCR system also got a solution, it's called call center solution. So if you wanna figure out your queue performance, you wanna figure out, uh, you know, the consulting service, is that good or not? Uh, you can use the call center solution. Uh, and uh, by the way, we also support CTI. So what we can do there is not just a call center solution. It's not just like a solution which can give us the feedback. We can even use our web client uh, to work under CTI mode. So we can use the web client to work as the visualize the panel to control our IP phone for a better audio quality. Whatever you prefer, this is just a flexible solution for you. And for kids, you know, we do support uh, carriage law. We support E911. 
uh, we also get Lanka solution. So for safety, you know, you can you can actually register uh, those kids mobile on our PBX as an extension. So if there's something wrong happen, uh, we can keep them be connected, right? A pretty good solution for emergency situation. Besides, we also got a broadcast solution. So we can play announcement, we can play uh, music, we can use the bell notification. Anyway, these are a complete solution for kids for school. Uh, and for IT manager, just like we were talking about several times, PCR system is really easy to use. Uh, if you guys jump into the system before, you will figure that out, right? It's a really user-friendly system. So for IT manager, I guess, uh, pretty simple for you to start your configuration. That's it. So generally speaking, you got a whole bunch of advantages are available on this PCR system, uh, really easy to use. Uh, and for customer use cases, just like I said, because of our P service system got a bunch of advanced features, uh, some functionalities. So totally, this is going to be a perfect solution, not just for school, uh, even for business users. You know, if you're trying to deploy the P service system for a basic communication platform, or you try to deploy the P service system for service center uh, or for remote working perfect solution you know all the advantages we were talking about before uh this is definitely going to be a dynamic system for you know such a solution like this and uh today we were talking about uh the solution for school for a campus uh honestly there are so many possibilities uh for you to you know make a piece of system be something special you can use the piece of system for basic business users you can use PCR system for educational area. You can also use PCR system for hospitality, right? So this is so flexible, so many chances there for you guys, um, you know. Uh, and about the school project, I guess we got a real case here. Uh, this is actually something based on our SR system. Uh, we do, makes we do have some successful cases. Now in today's session, just want to share this one with you guys. Uh, this one is deployed in Italy. Actually, we got lots of cases globally. Uh, so this feature, uh, I mean, this sol solution is just like I mentioned. They use our PBX with our Lancus, with our broadcast solution for the whole school campus. And uh, by the way, I guess uh, we got a something here I want to talk about here. Well, let's take a look. Uh, we actually want you guys, uh, if it's possible for you guys, uh, just give us your feedback. The best school case study award campaign, this is actually available for the states. So maybe if you guys have uh, any successful story with our Yaster solution, uh, especially for school uh, or for any other solutions, uh, you can just give us the feedback. All right. Yeah, I guess that was all we have for today's session. So any questions, guys? Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Steve. I'm looking at our question box, and I don't see any questions at this time. Um, we can give it a few more minutes or so or seconds um, in case anyone's typing in their questions. But um, if there's nothing else, then um, I guess we can wrap it up. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Jason, you and I must cover this topic very, very well because we didn't have any questions. So okay. um, I appreciate you being on, Jason, and, and doing the second half presentation up, uh, to cover the technical stuff. So thank you, everybody. We're going to close the webinar. Y'all have a great day. Sure. Have a nice day. Take care.